Who the hell is this guy? Back in 1902, this German engineer, Max Maria von Weber, invented what we know today as the tachograph. Let's discuss it on the trucker's eye. Tachographs these days are most commonly associated with trucks and truck drivers. As stated earlier, they were originally invented by Max Maria von Weber. He was a German civil servant, engineer and author. The tachograph was originally introduced for the railways so that companies could better document irregularities. Some of the rules can be very complex around tachographs, but they are designed to keep both companies and drivers in check. Coming up shortly in this video, we're going to have a look at the tachograph rules themselves, whether people think they are too complicated to understand or whether they could even be simplified. But first we're going to look at something that a lot of drivers do not understand, and that is how they actually record driving time. One of the most frequently used supposed pieces of advice that I hear drivers giving to other drivers is if you move your vehicle slowly and put it back onto the other mode such as bed then the tachograph will not register this time as a movement. Let me just give you an example. You pull up in a lay-by for a 45 minute break. There is a car parked in front of you and after 35 minutes the car pulls away. Another truck wants to pull in to the lay-by behind you but there is only enough space for a smaller rigid. The driver then asks you, could you please pull forwards, but you tell him you are on a brake. You are not allowed to move without interrupting the brake. If you do move and interrupt the brake, then technically you will need to start that 45 minute brake again. You can do a 30 minute brake because you are allowed a 15 and then a 30 minute brake. And technically you've only had a 15 minute brake as the interruption comes after that first 15 minute period. But Mr Driver, who is urging you to move forward to let him into the lay-by, is telling you that you can move forward in small amounts without marking your card. Like I said, this is false information. Because how your tachograph actually works is like this. Imagine that both of these boxes represent 30 seconds of each minute of time. The first box represents 0 to 29 seconds and the second box represents 30 seconds to 59 seconds. Whether you know it or not, your tachograph still counts in seconds even though it doesn't display it on the actual tachograph head unit. Now on a tachograph, if you drive in one half of the minute but not the other half, your tachograph will not mark the driving down as a minute. If however you drive across the both halves of the minute then it will mark you down as one minute's driving. So what I'm saying is you can drive from 29 seconds of the minute to 31 seconds just a two second movement and your card will mark you down for a one minute drive. However if you were to drive from the 31st second of the minute and then drive into the next minute up to the 29th second and then put the tachograph back on bed, you've only driven in one half of each minute and your tachograph will not mark you down as driving. Now before anybody gets excited, I'm not explaining to people how to move their vehicle so that they do not show a movement on their tachograph. I'm merely explaining how it works. And your taco head will also record a speed trace even though you cannot see it. The police can see it and the authorities can see it and they will know that you have moved the vehicle without it showing any driving time. Back before we had digital tachographs we used analog charts. As you can see this is an example of an analog chart and you can see the speed trace. The speed trace still exists on your digital cards and some drivers used to refer to these charts as frisbees. Drivers would insert their tachograph chart into a tachograph head, like this one displayed on the screen at the moment. Unlike today's trucks, these tachographs never actually showed you how much driving time you had done. You had to do it all manually. 
Drivers would need to keep track of their own accumulative driving times so that they would know when to have a break, etc. However, one of the worst things about the analogue tachograph heads was if the key went missing. That would be a massive problem. Later in the 1990s, analogue tachograph heads started to change appearance. However, the principle of inserting a chart was exactly the same. In Germany, analogue tachographs became compulsory in vehicles over 7.5 tonne from 1953. The rest of Europe then followed in commercial vehicles from 1986. Digital tachographs then came in on 1st of May 2006. All new trucks needed to be fitted with one. Digital tachographs are still evolving and we are now on Smart Tachograph 2. You can do a Google search if you need more information on what that is. There's no doubt that for drivers, tachographs protect them from unscrupulous employers. And as drivers know the tachograph rules and driving regs, I won't go into that into any more detail than what you already know. After all, you've all done your driver CPC. <coughs> But are the driving rules and tachograph regulations a little bit overcomplicated for their own good? For instance, drivers know that they can work three 15 hour days. Any other day must be a maximum of 13 hours. We could complicate things by telling people who don't know about driving hours about split rests and going into other things, but that's the point that I'm trying to make. Would it not be better just to make it a 14 hour day maximum? And here's another thing, if you work a 13 hour day, you're better off not reducing your rest, so in other words having a longer rest period of 11 hours, whereas if you do a 15 hour working day, your rest period within the 24 hours is usually reduced to 9. So you're doing a longer day with a shorter rest and then on a longer working day, it just seems a bit balmy that you're doing a longer working day with a shorter rest after it than when you do a shorter working day and get a longer rest after it. But these are the EU rules, so what do you expect? So now it's back over to you. Are tachograph regulations overcomplicated? Should they be simplified? Would you like to see them simplified or do you like them the way they are? Personally, I don't mind the tachograph regulations how they are, even if some of the areas of them are absolutely crazy. I'm just putting a second opinion out there for them being simplified. New drivers coming into the industry already have enough on their plate. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I'll see you next time on the Trucker's Eye.